Madam President. The Senator from New Mexico. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Madam President, I have seven unanimous consent requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have the approval of the majority and the minority leaders. I would ask unanimous consent that these requests be agreed to and that these requests be printed in the record. Without objection. Thank you uh, very much, Madam President. Madam President, I, I come today to, to uh, speak about the rules issue that has come uh, to a head here in the Senate. Uh, we have seen um, un, un, um, unprecedented obstruction uh, by the other side of the aisle. They have, they have continually, continually uh, blocked the nominations, and I'll get into the numbers here, uh, but this, this is something that uh, uh, has been building since we came in in this Congress. We had a debate about rules. We didn't do the things that we should have done. We should have put in place a, a talking filibuster. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we should have put, put in other rules changes. Uh, and now what has happened uh, we, is we find ourselves in the situation of a tyranny of the minority. And what is a tyranny of the minority? The founders talked about it. Uh, the founders uh, saw that if you created a situation where a minority could block the action of the Senate, uh, then the minority would actually be governing. And that's the situation we have uh, before us here today. Uh, the minority governs when it comes to nominees. Uh, and they blocked uh, nominees in a very, very significant way. Uh, and this is, uh, it, 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 I can't repeat enough, unprecedented, or unprecedented in the history uh, of the country. The president can't get his team. I mean, what is, what is at issue here, really, is we have a president of the United States who had a very big win in the last election. Uh, he put, he put uh, um, himself out there. He campaigned on a number of things uh, and won the election. And so you would think, well, he could get his team in place. Well, he's unable to get his team in place. He uh, tries to propose people, for example, uh, talking about the Consumer Protection Agency, a very qualified attorney general. Uh, I was a former atten attorney general a few years back. Uh, and this, this uh, uh, young man that he put forward uh, from Ohio, very well qualified. Uh, he has not been able to get a vote. And so he's in an agency that's tremendously important to the middle class. He's in an agency that's important to consumers. He's able to do things uh, that are very, very important uh, for consumers across this nation when it comes to bank loans, when it comes to safety issues, uh, all across the board. And, and here now we have a situation where uh, he, he cannot be sworn in uh, and do his job as a full-time appointee for that agency. So this, this is, uh, it's absolutely unprecedented and, and we uh, have to uh, uh, tackle this issue. Um, the, the thing that's happening with the minority side here is if they don't like a nominee and they don't like the policies that the nominee stands for, they don't like the administration's policies, they prevent the nominee from taking office at all. And, and so in effect, they, through the minority process that's being utilized here, are determining policy. And that's what the big objection is. Uh, and, and I think we're going to have to address this. And I, I'm uh, very supportive of Leader Reed coming out saying, we've got to address this, we've got to deal with this, and I think we're going to deal with it uh, starting today and flowing in uh, to the next week or so. Uh, it was mentioned here uh, uh, recently that uh, uh, the Republican Policy Committee in the past has had a document. I believe it was put into the record. If it, would, if it, if it wasn't put into the record, I would move that uh, this document. It, it, can I ask the chair, was the, the, um, the constitutional option, the Senate's power to make procedural rules by majority vote, was that put in the record? Was it? It was Without mentioned. Without objection, I, it will be placed in the record. It will be placed in the record. Okay, thank you very much. It it um, it was mentioned in earlier debate, and I just wanted to make sure that that uh, that was in there. And and the thing that that is very clear in reading this document 
uh, is that at the time of April uh, 2005 and in that period, uh, they were making very, very strong arguments uh, that you could uh, go forward during the middle of a session, and they were pointing out that uh, Majority Leader Robert Byrd, you know, Robert Byrd was one of the senators in this institution who really studied and knew the rules. Most people believe that Robert Byrd knew the rules better than any senator in the last hundred years. Uh, and, he, and he always felt uh, that, that you had the right, under the constitutional option, to make changes that needed to be made. And in 1977, 1979, 1980, and 1987, he established precedents that changed Senate procedures during the middle of a Congress. And I think that's what uh, we're talking about here, is something along uh, that line. So. This is, a, um, this is a critical issue for us today uh, as we try to move forward and we try to govern. Uh, we, we, the Democrats uh, have a majority and a big majority, if you take the independents that have joined with us, no doubt about it, and yet we cannot govern because of the procedures that are being adopted here today. And I just want to highlight a little of the um, uh, unprecedented uh, Republican obstruction. Executive nominees who are ready to be confirmed by the Senate have been pending on an average of 260 days, more than eight months since they, since they were first nominated. The Senate confirmed only 34 executive, executive nominees by the July 4th recess, compared to 118 at this point in the Bush administration. There are 184 pending executive nominees. Since President Obama took office, Senate Republicans have filibustered 16 executive nominations. Two nominees, including Mr. Cordray, that's the consumer protection head, have been blocked via filibuster. For the first time ever, Senate Republicans filibustered a nomination for the Secretary of Defense. As the New York Times noted, and I'm quoting here, the, the vote represented the first time in history that the Senate has required that a nominee for Secretary of Defense clear the 60-vote hurdle before a final, simple majority vote. That's the New York Times. Senate Republicans continue to block the nomination of Gina McCarthy to be EPA Administrator, claiming she's been unresponsive. Ms. McCarthy was forced to answer more questions than ever before more than 1,100 questions since Senate Republicans boycotted her hearing at the committee that I serve on, the Environment uh, and uh, Public Works Committee. Ms. McCarthy was previously environmental advisor to Mitt Romney. Uh, she has very good credentials. I, I would uh, urge my colleagues to look at what she did in New Mexico. Here you have uh, Gina McCarthy. Uh, there's a potential for a lawsuit. It's an issue that has to do with air quality in New Mexico. She ended up pulling all the parties together through her regional administrator and reached a compromise where we closed down two coal-fired plants and opened up in their place two natural gas-fired plants. It was considered by the governor and the EPA regional administrator and everybody. This was a win-win for everyone. And she engineered that from her position at air quality there in the EPA. One of the other points that should be made about Gina McCarthy, Gina McCarthy is a woman who has already been approved by the Senate. She's been approved in a, in a lopsided vote, and she's been doing her job for four years. So what are we doing here? That, that we're, we're saying that she has to be filibustered, she has to be stopped because they don't like the policies she's going to be put in place. So that it's absolutely... Uh, outrageous what's happening here, and we, we need to uh, uh, rein this in, and I agree that uh, uh, Senator Reid is headed in the right direction to do this. I note, notice that my colleague, um, Senator Patty Murray, and leader Senator Patty Murray, and our leadership team is here. Uh, I would ask that uh, uh, any uh, additional comments that I, put, that I have be put uh, by consent into the record and, and would applaud her 
for her work with Senator Reid, with the leadership team in terms of trying to address how we govern. And, and I thank you, Senator Murray, for your, your good work on that and, and very much appreciate uh, how you have tried to shape this issue and you've tried to always work with the Republicans on this issue. We've tried to work through these things and uh, we haven't been able to and so I would yield the floor.